word problem, our favorite types of word problems, right? God, man, they make me upset. So boring and hard and, ah, oh, man, they always just get with your brain, right? I like to sometimes think of uh, word problems like my little brother or little sister, right? Because what happens is they just annoy you and they're just, they just get under your nerves. And But then the more and more you finally get to meet them, you finally get to know them, the more you actually understand who they are and what they're trying to do, and you kind of actually start to like them. But the problem is you got to get to know them, right? Because until then, you're just, they're just a little pest. They just bother you. You know, they always get on your skin. They want to tease you and kind of stuff like that. But once you start to get the process, once you kind of start to get to know, you actually kind of get a little feelings from them. You're like, hey, you know what? You're not that bad. So let's try to get to know a process for solving word problems so we're not always freaked out or annoyed whenever we see a word problem. Um, the first process is to read it, okay? You gotta read the word problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read the word problem and it reads out five times the sum of a number and three is the same as three multiplied by one less than twice the number, what is the number? Now some of you can already do that in your head and you're like, oh, okay, I think I got it, I got it. yep, carry the one, boom, got it. Most of you, just that's just mobile jumbo, it doesn't make any sense. So we need to break it down. First way to break it down is we need to determine what is the question that they're asking us. They say all this stuff, but what is it they want? And usually that's at the end, and it is. It says, what is the number? So I'm going to actually just rewrite that question again. What is the value of the number? Now, you don't need to write value of the number, but I like to rewrite the question just so I get it implanted in my brain that when I'm finding the value, I'm finding that number. And again, I messed up on that problem. Okay. So it says five times the sum of a number and three is the same as three multiplied by one. Oh, blah, blah, blah. We don't know what the number is doing. So we need to assign a variable to that number. So I'm going to assign the variable x. So my next step is after I've read the problem and I've redefined what the question is, I need to be able to see what I'm solving for. And usually that's going to be a variable. And if they don't define a variable in the problem, then you're gonna to have to define your own variable. So I'm gonna say x is gonna be my variable, that's what I'm gonna solve for. And I'm gonna say x is gonna be defined for the value of the number. Because remember, um, value, remember x represents something we don't know. So if you don't know the value of the number, it's kind of good to make x the x your value, right? Kind of makes some sense. So we don't know what x is. But here's the key thing. When we're talking about the number, we start talking, we start making some sentences with this. So let's see if we can figure out the first one. It says five times. I'm gonna underline this because I know that five times means five multiplied, right? And it's being multiplied by the sum of a number, which is n, and 3. Now, big mistake. Students most often do this. Okay? But there's a problem with this. It's not 5 times n plus 3. It said 5 times the sum. That's the sum. That is the sum. It's 5 times this. So how do we mathematically write five times um, a two terms right there? Well, the way that we do that is we put parentheses around our two terms. So it's five times the sum of five plus three, five and three, is the same as, that tells me to equal, as three multiplied by one less than twice the number. Whoa, so it's one less. So if I'm 10 years old and, I'm sorry, let's say I have $30 and you have one less dollar than me, then you have $19, correct? Because you take whatever I have and you subtract one. So one less means I'm gonna subtract one, but what am I subtracting one from? One less than twice the number. All right, and your three is multiplied by all of that. So again, it's the same kind of technique. Well, now I have two parentheses on both sides. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to do distributive property. Remember, distributive property tells you to multiply 
whatever number is outside your parenthesis to everything inside of your parenthesis. And I'm gonna have to do that on the left side and the right side. So I have five times n plus five times three equals three times two x plus three times a negative one. Just kind of looks like that. Five times a variable is just five n plus 15 equals three times two x is six x minus three. Three times negative one is minus three. Where do I, why am I using n, a, and x? This isn't at x. Sorry guys, we always wanted to use the same variable, right? In a previous problem, I used n as my variable, so that's where I was getting mixed up. But x represents the value of the number, right? n, we didn't, we didn't determine. And when I'm actually talking to my students, this is actually a good point to bring up. When I'm talking to my students, if they make a variable, I tell them to define what their variable is or they get marked down. And the reason why is x represents that number. What the heck did n represent, right? Some of you might have been saying that, like, oh, wait, what, what is n, right? Well, I made a mistake. I was thinking of another problem, so I used n as my variable. Well, I've only defined one variable, which was x. So I should only have one variable in my equation. So now I need to get my variable on the same side. I'm gonna get rid of the variable on the left side, so I'm gonna subtract all five x's, so they'll cancel out the zero. So I get 15 equals x minus three. Then I'll add the three. Those will cancel out. Give me 18 equals x. So therefore, the value of my number is equal to 18. And I usually write that out, I kind of write on sports space. Um, I just don't write it out, but you answer is not x equals 18. The, the question says, what is the number? So you don't say x equals 18, say the value of the number is equal to 18. And that's how you solve a word problem.